Warning, the podcast you're about to hear has a unique conservative perspective and may be politically incorrect, containing some controversy in its message. This episode may speak out against liberalism, socialism, the dark state, and religious organizations. It is possible that evil in politics, education, law, society, and religion will be discussed and exposed. However, we believe this podcast adds truth and value to a mature, disenfranchised audience who may be tired of apostate religions and wicked world systems. Listeners who are easily offended, overly sensitive, or have progressive leanings sympathetic to the topics we expose should be forewarned not to listen any further. We thank both those who choose to listen as well as those who choose not to listen. You've been warned. And now, let us get on with the show. Hello, Freedom Friday. It is Friday the 19th of July. Uh, Today we got a terrible, 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 terrible show. It's so terrible, and I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding about this. It's so awful that even Miss Kapow uh, bowed out of it. And she said, if you don't mind, I'd rather not uh, talk about it. And I had a question my own. I did. I had a question my own reasoning here. I always, I always say I do this terrible news show to expose evil, and so that we know uh, where we're at in this evil world. And so, to me, and my little pea brain, it's like when we see this uh, cup of iniquity being filled up so much, it's like, oh yeah, it's got to be the end. You know, the, the Lord has to be returning pretty quick. So almost the bad news for me, I almost use it as um, a way of of finding good news behind it. The good news is that our Lord is going to come and set up his righteous kingdom. However, 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 uh, in the case of like today's show, I have to really question, is it necessary to talk about this stuff? Um. But where do I draw the line? You know, where do I where do I judge? You know, this is what I want to talk about. This is the evil I want to expose. But when it crosses this line, I I don't have, you know, the guts to expose it anymore. So I'm in a quandary. But anyway, it's it's horrible. It is. Um, I really don't even have a title for the show. But all the stories are about child sex offenders and. Um, child sex crimes it, it, I mean they're just they're absolutely over the top over the top um, because we've reached really we've reached a level of complete insanity uh, in our society just with the judicial system and then of course with demons and flesh suits and I don't say that lightly I, you know you know you hear me say this all the time but I honestly, I honestly believe that in my little pea brain, that there are creatures out there who are not human. They are not human anymore, or maybe they never were. I'm not real sure. But um, there are other creatures that I see, you know, on television or, um, you know, movie stars or even newscasters and things like that. That are not human, that that I believe are, I mean, they have these gray alien type of bodies. And I'm not talking gray aliens from outer space. I'm talking these demonic reptilian type of spirits. Uh, Nephilim, modern day Nephis, the interbreeding program. Um, and there's humans out there that do such... Uh, you just can't comprehend, uncomprehensible, incomprehensible, I should say, uh, crimes that um, they can't be human. They just can't be human. So anyway, I give you that opportunity to not listen anymore. And I definitely wouldn't hold that against you in any manner, even if I knew, <laughs> which I don't, <laughs> who listens and who doesn't. So I, I wouldn't blame you. I'm going to go ahead and, and do it, um, but it's a it's a horrible horrible topic. Uh, but before I do that, before I lose you, I want to remind you that the month of July, only in July, we have a free ebook giveaway on Smashwords.com under Fifth Oak Media. Five books. 
The Fate of Holiness, written by Pamela Talgenhoff. Christianity of Blasphemy, written by us. Idolicide by us. Martial Arts, by me. Wisdom of Death, by me. And these are all free. So go to fifthhookmedia.com. F-I-F-T-H. Fifth. O-O-K. F-I-F-T-H. O-O-K. M-E-D-I-A media.com. Right there on the splash page, I have a link to our Fifth Hook Media publisher account on Smashwords. You load the books onto your cart. When you check out, the discount will be given to you. The discount is free. Everything's free. Only for the month of July. Smashwords only has this promotion uh, once a year where you can discount books and um, I decided to give them away free. And then uh, it won't happen again for another year. That's even if I keep these books up there. I'm not sure. Our flagship books, Demons in My Marriage Bed and Eyes to See Unseen Enemies in paperback, can only be found on Amazon.com. And uh, those are not free. So don't get don't go there. Go to Smashwords. Uh, Christianity or a Blasphemy is also on Amazon for a cost, but you can get it free here as an ebook. All right. And you can download it in a bunch of different formats. It's kind of cool. Uh, don't forget the latest song released by Mesquite Cafe is called um, I'm a, I've am Become a New Man. And it's about becoming a new man in Christ and giving up what you used to do and your old nature. And you're different. And it's kind of a, a bluesy tune. It was based on B.B. Um, King's Thrill is Gone, same chord progression. And I just, uh, you know, my Mesquite cafe it out. It's a little different. So there you go. I'm working on a new one that's going to be really crazy. It's called Hermantown. And it's a song about the fallen angels screwing everything up. Actually, what I say in there, they uh, funk it up. F-U-N-K, funk. They funk it up. They get down to Hermantown and funk it up. Because um, that's exactly what happened. And that's why I'm reading the stories we are today because this is caused by uh, sin in this world but also the rebellion of fallen angels who have made it with the daughters of men and created these monsters so so without further ado let me get to the uh, horrible stories and like I said now you can bail out if you need to um, but if you want to see where we're at and uh, expose the evil you're welcome to stay so first story up, I have, um, this is local. This is local to me, Cedar City, it's Utah. And this, uh, the reason why I'm reading this is not so much of the guy's sex crimes that he did, but the judicial system and how it's so weak on these people many times. Not all the time, but many times. And it makes you wonder if they're all in the same club, you know, they all belong to the same Satanic Ritual Sex Abuse Club. So this is from the Spectrum in Utah. It's police. A child sex abuser in Cedar City violated probation. Here's the deal. It's a city Cedar man who was convicted of forcible child sex abuse of three children back in 2017. And he served a very light jail sentence. He was arrested again, police say, due to violating his probation as a registered sex offender. So, <clears throat> 2017, he was convicted of uh, abusing three children. And then several years later, he violates that probation. He should have never been on probation in the first place, as you will uh, soon learn uh, by his actions. And so this is guy's a danger to society and the children. But uh, this particular judge, at least in Iron County, doesn't give a rat's about the kids he only cares about the rights of this weirdo and the, you look at the the picture of this guy and well if you can't see demons looking back at you you need to pray for discernment his name is john benjamin Gedek. he's 20 years old he was arrested early friday morning by iron county sheriff's office authorities he violated his probation agreement by acting suspicious around other children. 
He was originally arrested in May of 2017. He was charged with three second-degree felony counts of forcible sexual abuse of a child. According to the probable cause statement, three children who are siblings told the police they had been touched inappropriately by a neighbor who had been invited into their home. Mistake number one, never invite strangers into your home. Well, I know the scripture, hey, don't forget to entertain strangers unaware. Uh, strangers, they may be angels unaware, but in this day of age, um, no. Angels can find other people to entertain. The children were eight and five and three years old at the time. Interviews with the children said uh, that this creep had touched their genitalia when he was left alone with them. And when he was first arrested, he lied. But then he admitted that he did, in fact, molest the three kids. And then he said it was an impulsive act. So that's uh, demonology 101. Impulsiveness, a drive to commit these kind of things. He can't control his sexual uh, drive for children is perversion. Well, according to the University Police Department uh, in Southern Utah, the campus police received multiple reports of this dude bothering female students on campus around the same time that he was molesting these three kids. Multiple individuals also complained to the Cedar City Police Department after this guy's arrest, complaining about his odd behavior, quote unquote. So even the cops say this guy is really, really strange. And they begged the judge to not just give him probation because his behavior was so odd. Yeah. But uh, nay, nay. This guy pleaded guilty to all three child sex abuse charges. And uh, it's by him pleading, uh, he got a plea deal. So he was convicted uh, that September by Judge Keith Barnes. So I don't understand what's up with, with Judge Keith Barnes. But he grants this guy probation and a minimal stay in Iron County Jail in lieu of a prison sentence. He just gets him probation for molesting these three kids. He also had witnesses that he was... Uh, Bothering females on a campus. Other people came in and said, man, he is weird. But no, the judge, hey, if you're going to touch these three kids inappropriately. You're, you're going to touch their genitalia and molest them. You get probation. <clears throat> and you get time served. You get a minimal stay in the jail. According to court documents, the prosecutors requested that this guy serve time in state prison. However, the judge sentenced this dude to serve 210 days in jail with credit for time served and then 36 months of supervised probation, which didn't work out too well, by the way. So when he was released, he was also granted the ability to live with his parents in Indiana. So now... As of May of 2018, he's in Indiana, and then police are dispatched to a neighborhood on reports of a suspicious male. Well, that's none other than our guy. And a police officer interviewed a mother in the area who reported that this dude spoke to her children and asked him where they lived. And the children got nervous and afraid and ran off to, you know, home. And the mother was then approached by this animal on a different day and he asked her if she needed anyone to mow her lawn or watch her children as a babysitter and the document indicates that he told the mother he was new to the area and was looking for ways to make money so the mother now this is a smart lady smarter than most she became aware that there was a new sex offender had moved into their neighborhood and her children told her the photo of the sex offender matched our boy who they had seen days earlier. So that system 
that, um, you know, Megan's Law and stuff like that, that works. And it worked in this case. But this judge, he ain't working. This ain't good. The officer wrote, it is with our deepest apology that this was not brought to the court's attention when it occurred in May of 2018. It is clear that the defendant struggles to obey the Group A sex offender guideline while on probation as a compact probationary to the state of Indiana. So there was a warrant issued for his arrest. It was signed by the judge, Barnes, according to arresting documents. And then he was arrested without incident in Cedar City Friday morning. His next court appearance is Tuesday. So uh, why the lean sentences, I don't know. I just suspect that the judge himself is a pedophile, sex club, ritualistic, Satanist, and they're all in the same club together. Here's another, this, uh, Louisiana man is arrested after his wife allegedly catches him raping a nine-year-old girl. Mm-hmm. And you should see a picture of this guy. His name is Glenn Mills. You can see the demons all in him, just staring at you. Just freaking staring at you. Louisiana man was reportedly arrested this week on first-degree rape charges after his wife walked in on him, sexually assaulting a nine-year-old girl left in his care. Once again, you can't entertain these particular people thinking they might be angels. You just can't. Glenn Mills Jr. of Slidell, Louisiana, ran from the home Wednesday after being caught fully involved in the rape of the young girl. His wife called the sheriff's deputies to report the crime, and he was arrested Thursday. He was booked into the jail, and uh, now we wait to see what happens in the court system. <clears throat> Horrible stuff. Shouldn't be, but it is. Let's see here. Oh, this, now, I got to warn you, this is the worst story. If you thought the other ones were bad, this is, this is the worst. Okay. So you may not want to hear this one. I, I, this one was, was even beyond my ability to comprehend it. Um, it says deviant Florida dad. And, you know, he's... A deviant Florida dad, 31 years old, who raped a screaming one-year-old daughter and uploaded the video of the attack to the dark web, is jailed for 70 years. Okay, so 70 years is a lot better than probation, but the man should be taken out and exterminated. Uh, this is vermin. This is vermin that does that does not need to be on top of the ground, breathing air in any circumstance. This this is this is to a point uh, where this guy should be killed, absolutely by the laws we have set in place. It is a death sentence. Um. So anyway. You get 70 years, but who knows? Uh, here's, here's, here's the headlines. His name is James Lockhart, 31, lives in Florida. He received the maximum sentence possible last Thursday. This is federal court, too. Probably in state court, he would have got minimum. But the feds play a little harder. He pleaded guilty on the March 26th to charges of producing, distributing, and possessing, possessing child pornography. Department of Homeland Security agents arrested Lockhart in October after he uploaded a video of himself raping his one-year-old daughter uh, to the dark web. Mm -hmm. Investigators who searched Lockhart's home found 43 child porn videos and at least 4,000 child porn pictures the content included more abuse of infants and sadomasochistic and violent conduct. 
His arrest was part of the U.S. Department of Justice Project Safe Childhood Initiative. And that's why it's uh, federal charges because uh, of Department of Homeland Security. Once again, here's a picture of this complete demonic fecal matter. <clears throat> and you can see in his eyes another being. A sadistic pedophile who authorities say shot video of himself raping his own screaming one-year-old daughter before uploading it to the dark web for others to view had been sentenced. He received the maximum sentence for his perverted crimes, according to federal prosecutors. He pled guilty to charges of producing, distributing, and possessing child porn on March 26. Federal agents with the Department of Homeland Security raided his home after they said he uploaded a video of a sexual attack on his own daughter to the dark web using special web browsers. They discovered the video during a child pornography ring investigation designated Operation Test Pilot. This is a demon produced a four video series of himself violating his daughter between March of 16 to February 18 according to the U.S. Department of Justice, before posting the clips on a dark web forum under the aliases of Strangewood and Hardwood. Agents who spoke to this dude's wife, who was also the mother of his two children, a boy and a girl, showed her a censored image of the one-year-old taken from one of the videos. And she identified the girl as her daughter and said the man's hand in the video belonged to her husband. His child pornography collection included infants in sadomasochistic and violent conduct. Uh, an agent said this deviant committed the most horrible atrocities imaginable to a one-year-old child. And uh, they're making sure that he'll never do that again. He had at least 4,000 other child porn videos. And check it out. He worked as a licensed paramedic at Paramedics Logistics, Florida, for six years before being fired in October. Um, so, yeah, the guy was a paramedic, so that he, you know, he could come to you know our house and provide medical services and all that stuff. And um, you just don't know um, who's around you, who's rubbing shoulders with you. Yeah, so hopefully he'll go to, uh, even though it's federal prison, hopefully he'll go there and meet some other men in there who uh, don't take kindly uh, to his crimes. That's the best we can hope for. Let's take a short break and I'll be back with some more horrible stories, but not as bad as that last one. Recently, spiritual attacks on innocent people have increased considerably. This is partly due to society's transformation into a satanic cult. Most people are clueless or hopeless in combating this spiritual mayhem. We wish to offer two good books to overcome these attacks. First, Demons in My Marriage Bed, a true story of spiritual warfare, offers one of the most effective training systems in combating spiritual darkness in order to gain personal freedom. Second, Eyes to See Unseen Enemies teaches how to see the hidden dangers which are all around us, even in places we would least expect them. Both books can be purchased on Amazon.com as a paperback or ebook. It is our desire that you will take advantage of these opportunities to increase your effectiveness in spiritual warfare and learn how to fight back instead of being a victim. We'll see you on the battlefield. Okay, it's your stupid Uncle Paul. Brother Kapow, and he is back with more horrible news on the Freedom Friday Hour Alternative News and Commentary. Um, and I'm not sure why I do this anymore. But anyway, here's a, another horrible, horrible uh, story. Uh, there's a Youngstown area doctor. This is in Cleveland. 
Ashland County, Ohio. To be specific, Youngstown area doctor is arrested. He's charged for allegedly raping a 12-year-old Ashland County girl. This guy's a medical doctor. Once again, if you look at his arresting photo, his booking photo, he's got the wonky eye, the demon staring at you. Just a monster. Uh, his name is Albert Ajed Toss. So here's, here's a story. Authorities in Ashland have arrested and charged a Northeast Ohio doctor for raping a 12-year-old girl. According to the county prosecutor, Dr. Albert Ayad, A-I-A-D, Ayad Toss, 51 years old, allegedly met the girl online and traveled to the Ashland area on at least one occasion to have sex with her. Now, here's a guy, is a doctor. We saw the guy, the, the father who was raping his one-year-old girl and posting it to the dark web was a paramedic coming into our homes and giving us help when we you know, needed it. And this guy's a doctor. He's, uh, he's looking at your children. He's looking at you. He's touching and filling you. And this guy's a total uh, demonic Nephilim. You can't trust anybody. Nobody can be trusted at all today. Um, it's just better not to trust them and let them prove that they're human than to assume that they are right off the bat. This is a doctor. I mean, here's, I mean, you talk about a demonic drive. You go through all this schooling and all these years to get to the profession of a medical professional. And then you just throw it all away because you can't control your perversion. That's demonic. There's no, there's no ifs, ands, buts about it. It's not just a demonic influence. It's a demonic possession. It's a control period this thing's not even human he met the child through a network of young teens he corresponded with the guy's 51 years old for the last several weeks we've been uncovering evidence that indicates this doctor traveled to a hotel in ashland county to engage in sex with a 12 year old girl local to the ashland area the prosecutor said in a press release, we have significant evidence that shows the arrangements being made and we have witnesses who will testify about what happened. The doctor was taken into custody last Friday by federal agents. Once again, we got a federal, apparently he probably crossed, um, you know, his crimes crossed state lines. Uh, could you imagine all the guys out there doing this stuff that are not caught, uh, that are doing it within state lines or the county and you're not catching them? Millions of them. Thursday, a grand jury issued a first-degree felony rape charge against the doctor. Uh, and he's uh, being held in Florida. So, yeah, he did cross state lines. He's in Florida. Uh, he's in the process of being extradited to Ashland County. Uh, the prosecutor said it's always heartbreaking to see a child being sexually abused, but it's particularly, particularly heinous when it's at the hands of a doctor who took an oath to protect the vulnerable, the facts of this case are especially heinous and disturbing, and I'll commit all the resources necessary to ensure that justice is done. So there you go. And he faces a maximum penalty of life in prison if convicted. Huh. Uh, why did the other guy get 70 years and this guy gets a maximum of life? Um, they both committed rape. One guy rapes rapes a, a, an infant uh, on video numerous times. I don't know. Beats me. Uh, okay, so this one is the least horrible story as far as child abuse, but it's still horrible because, well, it's the same demonic influence. It is the same drive. It is the same... Uh, lie. Uh, it is the same taking over of a human body or a flesh suit and totally controlling them. And it's the day we live in. This is uh, common now. It's everywhere. It's it's becoming more and more common. It's a, an agenda that's being pushed everywhere. 
especially on on the younger people because yeah the older you get you know we're not going to be here that long um so everything's being controlled through the through the younger generations and they're just screwed they're just so screwed um so if God does not return and intervene at any time soon, it's I I have no idea what this what this thing is gonna look like here. So here is a uh, here is a uh, former Catholic priest, which means absolutely nothing, by the way. That just means that this man was deceived from the beginning to go into a pagan religion and practice paganism under the guise of Catholic Christianity. So it, it means absolutely nothing that he was a priest. He was already deceived from the day from day one. Uh, so it, it shouldn't be surprising because a lot of these Catholic priests are molesting children and can't control their uh demonic urges anyway so it's not surprising that this idiot decides to go this route but it makes good news fodder and it makes a good story to get the agenda out and that's what this is and so he says um i've still got god's support this ex-catholic priest says he's got god's support and he's a transgender priest now he's 37 years old he leaves the catholic church to become a woman after six years of secretly struggling with, of course, it says her identity, but it's not a her. It's a him, and it'll always be a him. It'll always be a biological male DNA chromosomes. He will always be a male. I don't care what the demons whisper in his ear. He now calls himself Alicia... And I don't make this up. It's C-A-C-A-C-E. And uh, those of you who may not know that, C-A-C-A is caca. And in Spanish, caca means crap or feces. Like you're full of caca. Or he caca his pants. Caca. So the chosen name is caca C. And I would like to say that Alicia says, see my caca. This thing was born in the wrong body from a young age. Born in a wrong body. And that's what uh, Lady Gaga says, that uh, she was born that way. Damn it. And that's why Joel Olstein likes to go take pictures at the Lady Gaga concert and be part of the world and hold hands with the world. Because they're all part of this whole demonic cult. It's, all, it's one big satanic ritual cult that we live in. That's what we're fighting our way out of, by the way. And then uh, this thing struggled for six years with its identity until hormone therapy, therapy came to its rescue. And now it's focusing on being a trans girl, but still practices uh, the priesthood. And I'll tell you what, he is one. I mean, you know, men uh, dressed like women and with the big face, the big skull. Oh, my Lord. Just you thinking, what are you thinking, man? Um, a transgender priest who left the Catholic Church to become a woman says he still has the support of God after leaving the clergy. How many of you believe that's true? Raise your hand. You know, he never had the support of God in the first place. He was a Catholic priest. That has nothing to do with the God you serve. Absolutely nothing. Uh, he has the support of his God. That's for sure. And that's Lucifer. Lucy in the sky with trannies. So uh, Mrs. Kaka now, Mrs. C. Kaka, is 37 years old. Uh, he, he always felt like he was in the wrong body for as long as he could remember. He was brought up in a religious family, trained to become a priest at a young age, despite battling his identity. He struggled for six years before a visit to an LGBT bar. So that's always good for a Catholic priest, no, no matter if you're a pagan Catholic priest. A lot of people don't know that, so they still respect you as some kind of religious figure, at least. So that's always good to go visit gay bars. So this thing goes to a gay bar, 
And then he realizes that he had to be true to himself. So then he begins to transition. In other words, he becomes a drag queen. So Ms. Kaka, C. Kaka, who was uh, born male, and I should add is still on, still a male, has been on hormone replacement for a year. And uh, uh, he's never been happier. Never been happier. Never, never, never. Uh, he, here's what he says. This We can all take good advice from a, a weirdo like this. Somebody who's mentally ill. This is mental, spiritual illness. Um, he says, once you face that fear and do it, you feel a lot better in yourself. <laughs> the best thing I've ever done was change over. I don't think I could ever kind of go back. Whatever that means. So Ms. Uh, C. Kaka felt uncomfortable as he was growing up and confesses to falling into the wrong crowd. Following a dysfunctional upbringing, he turned to God, not our God, and decided to train as a priest because you don't train as a priest when you really know Yahweh through the Lord Jesus Christ. You train as a priest when you're into a uh, pagan religion. She was deeply, I'm sorry, he was deeply committed to his faith but knew there was something wrong. See how they misuse the word faith? They have no idea what that means. The Greek word pistis, to believe. And what is it that you believe on? You believe on Jesus Christ and all his work, even what he did, that God brought that in. It's not just faith as a religious belief. There's a specific faith. There's a specific truth you have to believe in to appropriate that truth for the remissions of sins and then you change and repent and quit sinning but in this case no we're going to co continue with our perversion and our lie because we're, we're demons the 37 year old continued i knew i was female trapped in a male's body from a very young age i was just pushing it to one side Seeing others happy was great. That was really set a spark off in my mind you know, while he's partying in a gay bar. Uh, at first, Mrs. Uh, C. Kaka was terrified of leaving uh, his house in female clothes. I don't blame him. But the local trans community has since given him all the important support he needs throughout his transition. That's where he's getting his support from, the local trans community. And he says that he cherishes his time uh, as, as a priest. And he's even held on to the priest's robes. But he's quick to admit that uh, he has completely left that part of his story behind. And he enjoys his life with his daughter, Abby. And this is really cute because there's a picture of this man dressed like a woman with this big old fat skull, that his big old man face. And he's, uh, he's embracing his daughter who, who looks just like him, except it's a little female with a little skull. But he, but he looks just like him. Oh, my Lord. It's really amazing. Uh, let's see. Here's what he says. I'm kind of out of that frame of mind being a clergy member. And I'm into the frame of mind of being a transgender girl. Focusing on the new life. But the trans woman has held on to her vocation, it says. It's a he. He's still attached to his faith. And he regularly practices the pagan Catholic rituals to a Luciferian God. Good for him. Um, he says, I still got God's support. Lucifer still loves me. I definitely have Lucifer's support. I can feel it. Lucifer loves me, Miss C. Kaka said. I'm at that point in my life where this is my life. This is how I want it to lead it. Go out and be happy, dang it. And so um, there you have it. You know, good luck with that. Good uh, luck with that, you know. So, hey, yeah, you want to believe whatever you want to believe Sure. So that is uh, about all the bad news I have. That was horrible. Those of you did stick around. I um, I commend you for having uh, an incredible amount of guts and uh, what we call in uh, Mexico huevos, because uh, it was a hard one. Like I said, even Miss Capow had a bow out. She uh, 
she just can't read these. This is just too much. It's horrible. I can barely get through it. But uh, anyway, hopefully I'm not deceiving myself and hopefully this does do some good to somebody somewhere in exposing the lies and um, <sighs> gauging just how <laughs> far off uh, this world is and just how close our demise is in the, in the, the end of this uh, probationary period for us is so ho hopefully that that accomplishes that and i'm not just uh reading bad stories or just repeating bad. i certainly don't do it folks for sensationalism i really don't um i don't have that kind of least listenership or um podcast um you know fame or you know no one knows who the heck i am uh i I certainly don't get any benefit out of this. Um, I don't get anything. So I, I don't do it to be sensational. I, I really do have a pure motive. Um, but sometimes I have to question why I do some things. Okay, so anyway, that's enough about that. And um, good night. And don't forget, I got free ebooks. on Smashwords this month only. And you have a new song called uh, I, I've Become a New Man by Mesquite Cafe. That is available everywhere where you have uh, digital music. Spotify, Amazon Music, iTunes, if you still use that. Um, if you want to listen to the song for free, go to YouTube. Go to Mesquite Cafe uh, YouTube, and you'll go to our channel, and uh, you can listen to all these stuff uh, free. Oh, I'll tell you where you can you, you would go free. Just go to... Um, fifthhookmedia.com while you're getting the free books go click on mesquite cafe blues band right there that tab and you have every single video of every single song we've done right there and uh, it doesn't cost you a dime you can listen to it and you go i like this maybe i'll buy it put it on my phone maybe i'll stream it or i hate it and uh and i won't do anything with it yeah that choice is yours um so that's it and hopefully uh, i'll get this other song going that's gonna really piss off some people um or archons because it's all about the fallen angels and what they did i know it's a common theme everybody writes about it <laughs> so anyway you guys have a good night and uh, we will talk to you later and i will leave this show with playing uh i'm a new man so you can hear it right now all right so good night Change man.